Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we've got some stories about adoption and how late smart money actually is and how early we actually are. So first up, we've got the Motley Fool. Uh, they are saying that they are going to finally get into Bitcoin. And the real question is, what took you so long? Because right now it's $50,000 per Bitcoin. Also on top of that, we're going to take a look at Coinbase getting ready for their public listing as they get a $77 billion valuation. And uh, if you think they're all about the retail investor, I want you to think again. Also, we're going to take a look at a fantastic commercial from Ryan Reynolds, who gives some sage Bitcoin advice. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, what is going on with the DNU stake pool and how you can uh, avoid being uh, oversaturated and losing rewards. So we'll go over all that. Uh, but first, take a look what's going on the market today. So today it is February 18th, 2 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. Beautiful day over here. About 50 degrees. Going to be 70 on the weekend. Cannot wait. Uh, so if you're in the cold weather, uh, I'm sorry. What can I say? So here's what we got today. And let me blow this up so you can actually see it. So we've got... Uh, the big story, of course, is Bitcoin hitting 52,000. And not only did it hit 52,000, but it didn't go down. That is the big thing. Because when you have something like, like Bitcoin go up this much uh, in a very short amount of time, you always are expecting a retracement, but not so, Mary Jo. Here we are uh, holding strong at 52K. So we'll see how that works out. Now we've got Ethereum almost hitting that $2,000 mark. Great. Tether's tether. Nobody cares. Here's the big story. Uh, Binance coin. And actually, we are going to cover this uh, in a little bit because I need to talk about what happened with Binance and why it went up so fast uh, to almost $200. I mean, there are some, uh, that is a fantastic play and it's really leapfrogging everybody. Real question is, when is it going to jump Tether? Uh, Cardano's up. Everything's mostly up, uh, except for, I mean, the ones that are like going wildly up, like Polkadot, XRP, Litecoin, whatever. Chainlink. Let's see what else. Dogecoin is up 14%. But if you notice one thing about Dogecoin, it's up 14%, but it's all time high. I think it was like eight cents. It's, it hasn't even hit six. So if you're still holding on to Doge and think it's going to hit a dollar, I'm here to tell you it's not. And that's it. So let's see what else we got. Nothing real. IOTA. IOTA is in the number 20th spot. And if you're familiar with IOTA, I don't know if you are, but it is one of those projects that was on the cutting edge. And as far as like transactions per second, they were quoting something crazy like a million TPS using this entanglement. And um, I don't know what's going on over there, but uh, I'm going to be interviewing the uh, creators, uh, both of them, on uh, Tuesday. So I'm going to figure out what the heck's going on and why they are rocketing up so fast, uh, what partnerships they have and what's going on. So I'll let everybody know about that. All right, let's take a look at the sentiment. What I, I don't want to, when we're talking about trade the chain and sentiment, I'm going to click this for one time, and this is going to tell you like what could go up. Wow, Cello has got a chance of going up 10% in an hour. Uh, I would probably look at that. Uh, Unibright, 11%, CyberVision. So all good things that could go up. This is a good one. Redcoin. Uh, it's, and remember, these are like 93% uh, accuracy rates, which is pretty good. 8%, it's going to go up. Uh, in an hour, maybe go up 2%, somewhere in that range, but yeah. What I want to do is I want to click this again, and I want to see the bottom dwellers to see which ones are going to just start to crash. Uh, let's see, Digital Note is a good chance it's going to go down 31%. Oh my God, look at this. Polymath, 40%, uh, 5%. And remember, these are all like, look at this, Augur. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Augur, but you got a, a reasonable chance of hitting a negative number in the next hour. And this is just all, you can take a look at that. Anyhow, uh, you can check out Trade the Chain in the link in the description, but let's go on today's uh, top story, which I found was kind of interesting. So the Motley Fool, uh, Motley Fool, it's a, a group of investors, it's a company that really, you see them all over the place as far as like ads, they want you to like sign up so you can get, they can give you all these fantastic tips. Well, here's a fantastic tip. They finally got into Bitcoin and they're super late. So this is what they talk about. They said, hey, we just bought five million of Bitcoin. Wow, great, good for. That. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking. I'm like, oh, how dare you only put five million? But it is in these days of the Michael Saylor, the Michael strategy it doesn't seem kind of like lackluster to see like five, five million. What else you got? Five million. But uh, yeah, it's what it is. Five million, and this is why. And the thesis statement is pretty good, actually. For that talk about, they said we believe it, uh, Bitcoin will store value more efficiently or effectively than gold. It can become a medium for transactions, interesting, as if pricing stabilizes in the decade ahead. 
and we believe it can act as a productive hedge against inflation. And they talk about, we generally recommend investors aim to own at least 30 stocks and hold them for a minimum of five years. We think Bitcoin can play a role. So first of all, why am I saying this? There's two reasons. First of all, uh, Motley Fool is everywhere and they reach a pretty large number just through their email marketing or their, their marketing that they do on social media websites. So if they're gonna recommend Bitcoin, so much the better. That's just one more avenue for people who have no idea what's going on to hear Oh, I hear Bitcoin over here from Motley Fool. Oh, I hear Bitcoin over here on CNBC. Oh, I hear Bitcoin ever at Mad Money. Oh, I hear Bitcoin on Twitter. Oh, I hear Bitcoin with my kids. And before you know it, it's just like they just hear it all over the place and they have to buy it. And that's really how sales works. You have to see something seven to 10 times before it sticks in your head. I don't know how many of you have like, you know, heard about Bitcoin and said, oh, I'm gonna buy that immediately. Usually it's not the first time uh, that didn't happen for me and maybe it didn't happen for you. And I think this is why it's interesting that Molly Fool is finally getting in. However, I have to say this is the second thing. These, this group of individuals are experts and smart money and they're getting into Bitcoin at $50,000 per Bitcoin. 50,000. Like you couldn't, uh, you know, do this a couple of months ago when it was like 20 or 30,000, now you're 50,000, or you know, maybe like see you know, uh, on the horizon what could have happened. Again, not to knock it, but it is kind of odd that uh, a financial service who tells their members like what to get into is now like, oh, Bitcoin. So <laughs> there was a, a nice little back and forth. And uh, these two guys said it pretty accurately. They said, hey, you guys made many several millions on your stock picks, other services you provide, which are mostly growth but you're almost never, ever early, like Bitcoin, better late than never. And then John says, would have been a lot cooler if you bought 5 million at 30,000, makes me wonder who we should be taking advice from. And that's the thing, like when you take a look at what's going on in the world these days, like who do you take advice from? Who do you take a look at and go, okay, this is definitely uh, something that I need to really look into and get into. And who are the people that uh, you trust? Now look, you can't, trust me as far as like a financial advisor because i'm not a financial advisor i just talk about the news and i just tell you what my portfolio is and what i'm doing you shouldn't uh solely go on what i'm talking about but if you take a look around and all these so-called experts and smart money it seems like a lot of people are just really missing the boat these days about what is going on and i wonder if things are just moving so fast that it's hard for these huge entities and institutions and corporations to keep up because there's so much bloat on top it really takes just somebody to just cut the minutia and take a look at what is really going on uh, in this market. So I thought it was interesting. And uh, another, another piece is, is that this is that uh, if you're here right now, uh, Motley Fool thinks they're early for Bitcoin. They think they're early. I don't know how long you've been in. Like I've been in since 2017. Some people have been in since like 2012 on, on this channel. So when we think about like, oh, like look at all the fantastic gains we've had. You ain't seen nothing yet because we're only in February and this is the bull run year. I do not see this really slowing down. And even a lot of the experts don't see it slowing down until October, November, December, January of 2022. So again, we will see. You are early, so uh, I, I envy you because if you're here right now, you have a great opportunity. Uh, again, not financial advice, this is just uh, the things that I'm investing into. All right, so let's take a look at our next piece. So, ah. Boyan's coin, the one that I forgot to talk about in the beginning. I want to talk about this real quick. And I actually sent this out on a tweet and I said, you know, hey, congratulations, Binance, because I mean, you guys were going from, it was $9 just a month ago. So in 24 hours, it went up 33%. In a week, it went up 60%. In a month, it went up 343. Then three months, 578. It was only 20 bucks six months ago, $20. For Binance coin just six months ago and now here we are and I said hey it's a great platform and if if you're not new to the channel you know exactly why I like Binance coin first of all I don't own any Binance coin and uh, also newsflash I'm super biased on the things that I own just the truth but uh, I mean when I take a look at this I can understand why it works because it has real world utility if you take a look at the blog post, or if you just go to Binance, take a look at what this coin does. Well, it saves you on fees. They've got a great loyalty program. They've got uh, discounts for their uh, debit. I think they even have credit cards coming and all the different uh, new uh, cryptocurrencies that are being listed. If, the more Binance coin you have, the more interest you get on certain aspects. So, I mean, that works. 
that works and I can understand why people would want a ton of it. And now as things are taken off and Binance, you have to remember, is global. They're all over uh, the world. They even have Binance US. Mm. So whatever. Uh, tell me in the comment section if you can get uh, Binance coin on Binance US. I don't think so. I could be wrong. But uh, I need to, I really would have liked to gotten a Binance, like to have gotten into Binance coin early. So when you take a look at utility and what is going on, Binance is great. And that's why I'm so big on Voyager. Uh, Voyager, you have to remember, is only available in the United States. It is not an exchange. It's a broker. So it goes through multiple exchanges. They just released their loyalty program just a week, week and a half ago or so. And uh, it's, it's great. 7% interest for, uh, for staking. There's going to be discounts for uh, withdrawals, discounts for their debit and, and potential credit cards. They're going to, at some point uh, in Q2 or Q3, they're going to look at uh, direct swaps between stocks and cryptocurrencies. They have over 50 cryptocurrencies. And it's, I mean, and it's only right now at like, uh, I think $4, $3.90, somewhere around there. So when you take a look at, at what it is, and then also look at, at the max supply, because with uh, Binance Coin, I think you're looking at like 128, 138 million, someone correct me. And then for uh, Voyager, you're looking at only 200 and something uh, million tokens. So it's not like it has billions and millions of tokens or billions, it's pretty low. So um, I see things to really start to fly off the shelf uh, in Q2, when first of all, the loyalty program goes into effect. Second of all, when, uh, Voyager moves into uh, Europe because they just purchased, or not just purchased, but they purchased LGO, uh, Prime Brokerage, and over there in, in France, I believe. And they're also going to move into Canada as well. So you take those factors, um, that's what it is. I've already predicted in my price prediction on January 7th, I said this is when uh, the Voyager token was 29 cents. I said it'll be 30 bucks. And that was January 7th. If you listen back then, it would have been pretty good. Now, that was just... One of my price predictions, I've been wrong on Uniswap. I said it would only go to 20 bucks. I'm very conservative. So if you think that that's conservative, look what happened with Voyager. That's all I'm going to say. Again, not financial advice. And uh, these are just things that I'm doing. All right. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And uh, let's go on to our next piece, which is all about Coinbase. And I'm not a big fan of Coinbase just because of uh, how they treat retail, because they are catering towards, uh, you know, big institutions. And they are the ones allegedly that helped Tesla to get their massive amount of Bitcoin, 1.5 billion. That's fine. I have nothing, I have no problem with that. Business is business. But what I don't like is when people are contacting me going, Rob, can you help me with, oh, can you, <laughs> Rob, can you help me with Coinbase? Because I've sent them numerous emails. It's been a month and I've been locked out. Rob, can you help me with this? So I mean, with that. First of all, I'm not customer service. I don't know Brian Armstrong. And uh, my only advice I'm going to tell you is, one, get out of Coinbase, and two, just uh, shame them on Twitter because no one likes bad press. That's really it. But uh, just so you know, they are going to do an IPO, and they're going to go public. Let's see. So they are trading, uh, actually, their stock is valued at $77 billion based on trading of the company's privately held shares on a secondary market. So they're not public yet, but there's a secondary market where they're swapping shares uh, between all these huge investors, and this is what it is. Those shares in the largest crypto exchanges in the U.S. are changing hands on the NASDAQ private market at $303 a piece. What's going on? Well, the first week it was $200 a share, second week it was $300, and then the third it was $303. So they're doing price discovery just like we're doing price discovery with cryptocurrencies, so that's what it's probably going to be at when it goes public. When does it go public? Should be in the next, I think they said something about the next uh, month, two months, three months, somewhere around there. And uh, that'll be good for them. So great, whatever. Maybe they can use all that money and uh, st start to uh, you know, pay more customer service reps and uh, help some of you guys uh, get back into your accounts. Anyhow, let me know what you think about uh, Coinbase's fantastic news. Uh, let's move on. Next up, Ryan Reynolds gives fantastic advice on Bitcoin. That's that's the whole story. So this is a it's a commercial. It's a minute and a half. I'm only going to play the, the first 45 seconds, and uh, you can take a listen. But it's it's actually pretty good. Let me uh, blow this up, and uh, I'll tell you what he's talking about. Every morning, Alex Roland wakes up and begins his long day of reflection. Alex is a savvy investor. It was brand new, like no one was doing this in 2010. 
he bought $500 in Bitcoin. Today, that investment is worth over $280 million. Alex is the only millionaire in the family, but you'd never know it if you met him. This isn't because he's humble or eccentric, no. It's because he can't remember the password to his f***ing Bitcoin account. If you invest in Bitcoin, write your password down. And that's it. Stage advice. Just write your password down. Uh, and not only that, keep it safe. Because if you know my story, I lost 20,000 uh, Cardano or ADA because I, I was writing everything down on pieces of paper and I was storing everything. And this is when I actually had a Binance account, when Americans could actually have a Binance account. I bought ADA over there. Then when they said, you can't do that, you got to put it into a wallet. Well, I picked Daedalus, but this was Daedalus on the test net. And I had the paper somewhere and now I do not know where it is and it is gone. So uh, just make sure that you, you write all these things down because if not, it's going to be a real pain in the A later on. It's not how much you make. It is how much you keep. So listen to me and this guy, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, that it's, it's pretty good advice. And if you need a place to store it, this is what I highly recommend. I got two of these. It's called Shield Folio or Stone Book. Uh, made from stone, lasts a lifetime, tear resistance, water resistant, and they don't leak or smudge for your ink because at, over time they will go away. You can also, they use this come cool like ghost pen, like James Bond stuff. I don't really use that one, but uh, I got two of these books. And it's pretty cool. So like I get two of these books, everything's in the right place. One is here in my house. The other one is in my uh, safety deposit box in case something terrible happens to my house and it burns down. But uh, again, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. If you look in the description below, I think it's like the second or third one, uh, Freddie, the CEO, he gives all Dan users like 20% off. It's not expensive, but it's gonna save you a lot of heartache. So that's just my recommendation. All right, and then lastly, I just wanna talk about the uh, DMU stake pool. So this is what will happen if we don't stay ahead of it right now. So this is uh, ADLT, it's one of, the, one of the stake pools. I think this is the Ada Light, one of the Ada Light stake pools. And right now, uh, Cardano sets the uh, saturation point at 63 million right now. So these guys are already saturated. So what happens when you're saturated? Well, you lose rewards, just like it says right here. I'm gonna blow this up. So 17%, once you get over, you start to lose rewards. So you just gotta make sure that you are up to date and know what's going on. So that's 77 million, but um, for Dan teaches crypto, first of all, if you're looking for the stake pool and the information, here is the webpage. To find that, just go to, in, in all my videos, let me get this, uh, on the very top, actually it's right here, Dan Cardano stake pool. Just click on this, it'll take you to, the web page and it lays it all out. And then if you scroll down right here to this video, it's 13 minutes and tells you exactly how to stake. And you, you have your choice of Daedalus, Yoroi, and ADA Light Wallet. But what I added in there right now is because you go just the very next piece right here, there's saturation levels. So if we click on the DNews one saturation level, we'll pull this up real quick. It's, you'll notice that it's Wow, it's 50% saturated. So what does that mean? Well, it's okay right now, but at the end of March, Cardano is dropping their saturation point from 63 million to 32 million. So this right now will be oversaturated. I cannot let that happen. So if you are listening to this right now and you are going to uh, stake to the, the DNU stake pool, do not stake to this stake pool. What I want you to do is you can go over here, you can check the DNews 2 saturation level, and it's only at 3.6 million. So I'm just trying to stay ahead of it before people start to really blow up the, uh, the, the stake pool and start to put everything in there. And then we can't, I mean, we can always reverse the process, but I don't wanna have anybody lose anything. It's better to be prepared now than have to go backtrack. So just, you know, that's what's going on. And this DNews, the second stake pool, we started this up uh, eight, nine days ago or something like that. And we're already at 3.6 million. So if you're looking to stake, this is the time. If you're worried about uh, the DNU stake one being oversaturated, you can always go to the website, check the saturation level, and then go from there.
okay? So not too bad. And then also, if you want to take a look at uh, how we're doing as far as rewards, the industry average is between four and 6%. We're, uh, for the lifetime is like 5.4 or something percent. So we're doing really good because we use Microsoft Azure, very fast, very reliable, and it just works. So that's why we use it. So that is what is going on for the Dune News Stake Pool. Just wanted to but make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on. And uh, that is it. So if you made it all the way to the end, hey, thanks. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and then also sub consider subscribing. We do these every day and they're all time sensitive. So that would be fantastic. I really appreciate it. Also, if you like these types of videos, we two ones gonna pop up on your left and right. Uh, I don't know, uh, but YouTube do its magic. And that is all for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.